Hey fun people, what's going on? This is your Graphics Rogue, and we're going to have another fun time playing Rome 2 Total War Online. I am once again playing the mighty Roman Empire, because I'm, I'm just a shit like that. My opponent today will be Napoleon du Quebec. I assume he's French-Canadian because he has Napoleon and Quebec in his name, and also because he speaks French to me. So I've put together this army that I don't know, I have no idea how effective they are really. I don't really don't know how cost effective the whole thing is. I just, I picked out a bunch of units that I thought looked cool. Triarii, Eagle Cohort, First Cohort, Praetoria Cab and stuff like that. They looked like they were high level and they looked like they were cool. Cool looking. That's basically the reason I chose this to be my preset Rome layout. Hola, my French friend, hola. Maybe he's French, maybe he's not French, I don't know. But he asks about elephant and cav, and we decide against it, just a normal, just a normal match we're going to have. I, I like to keep evenly formated. I like to keep evenly balanced armies with infantry, missiles, and cavalry. I don't like to have just all cavalry and just all melee. I'll try testing out different builds later on try to venture into that kind of territory which, of which I know nothing about. Just an all barbarian melee army, I have no idea how I could play that, but I'll try it out in another in another video. I've tried one Parthia battle so far, and I might, I might show that later. Where I had like four melee units, or a few missile units, and all melee cav and missile cav. I somehow won. I have no idea how I won, but I won. It seems to me in this game, Missile Cav isn't as devastating, isn't as fantastic a unit as it was in Rome 1, which is very disappointing. Tell my friend, ready when you are, I'm about to start the match. My favorite faction to play period is Rome. Rome 1 got me into the Total War series in the beginning, and Rome has just always been my favorite faction. It's just so cool to me. This, the awesome Imperial Warlords of Rome conquered the world. The Total War series really got me into ancient history. Ever since I played Total War, I've been learning more about ancient history from this game, small amounts from the Total War games, because they're not massively historical. But I've been looking, I've looked for tons of documentaries and stuff, histor history channel shows. I just loved it. I know a lot more about Rome than I ever thought I would, than I ever thought I would want to know before, before I started playing Rome 1. The Total War series just got me huge into, into history and documentaries. I own most of the documentaries about Rome. I have burned on DVDs. I just love, sometimes I love to just put them on in the background while I'm playing a Total War game or something. Just, just to kind of listen to it while I'm playing the game. And just, oh, interesting. I love hearing about that. So, I'm just going to skip over to the battle. I'm Rome, my opponent is Epirus, and next time you hear me, we'll be on the battlefield. And hello, good people of the internet. My army is on a inclined hill here where we have the upper ground. Not many trees around, so it's going to be... Pretty straightened out battle. Orders Nobody's gonna be hiding any, anything from anybody. But I'm not leaving this hill. I'm letting him come to me. I'll be advancing in small bits to try to lure him to me. General. But I am using the uphill to my advantage. I got my legion set up in a manipular fashion, putting my cavalrymen together. Whenever I play as Rome, I usually keep them in this kind of similar formation and unit composition. It's worked for me many times in the past and it keeps working for me. I don't know of any other composition or formation that would work with this type of army. It's the, Rome doesn't have any phalanxes so letting them sl just slam up against my front isn't I don't think is going to save the day. I think, I think with a Roman Legion, you need to have some missile units and some cav and some hardy legionnaires to put up the front. 
fill gaps and flank the enemy rear. I am ready and I'm just ready, waiting for my opponent, Napoleon du Quebec, to ready himself and the mighty army of Epirus to do battle with me. And we'll see if my we'll see if my uh, tactics that I've been using so far with Rome will work on this guy. And it looks like we're waiting the full minute. That's fun. And appears the army of Epirus. I move my people up to go the enemy coming at me. I don't think it's good to just stay where you are at the beginning. You gotta, you gotta move your guys up. Not only is it's uh, it's it's one for one courtesy to the other player not to just stand at your starting position, but also you want to goad them to come. He's got an interesting army composition. He's got a lot of cavalry, a lot of a lot of skirmish cav. He's got a few pike units, a few sword units couple of missile units but he's planning on he's planning on utilizing this cab he's this is smart he is he's going a wide flank on me he is keeping his middle his main center of the army steady in the middle while he's sending some of his pikemen and his cavalry on both flanks to both distract me and ready himself to fully envelop my army I'm not falling forward, I'm pulling my cavalry back behind my main army. I'm picking a couple of spear units to get on the flanks. Picking a few units to become my main center, a few units to put on the flanks to deal with any flanking incursion from their from their advance party. And you can tell what he's going to do. He's got a lot of skirmish cabs, so he's going to come up. He's not going to try to engage any of my infantry. He's just going to want to pepper me with spears. And that's smart. He's going to send his missile units up as well. He's going to try to... He's going to try to hit me with his, with as many units as he can. Try to weaken me before, before a final engagement. He's doing what I would do. He's playing. He's playing the missile game first. Then he's. Then he plays the melee game. So I decide to send my army up a little more. Try to goad him into advancing, and he does. He's advancing a bit. Slowly moving his flank forces up while I move my compacted forces further. Sending some of my missile units to the side to try to pick off a few of his cavalry. He is playing this calmly. He's not just rushing me with his infantry and his and his cav. He's playing it smartly. He's going to he is going to try to skirmish me with his cav, but but I've got an answer to him. I'm gonna send my missile units out to try to concentrate on his skirmisher cav units, and he knows that I've got my skirmishers over there dealing with things, so he's gonna send his cav up there. But I'm gonna send my cav to deal with my left flank and any problems he's got going there careful to send a couple of my units to aid the arc to aid the missile units and sending my cab to try to take out his cab on my on my left as you see I've already taken out some of his cab units with my missile units and I've smashed his I smashed his right flanking units hard and I'm just crushing he he must not have been paying absolute attention to the moment. He must have been paying more attention to the other flank and he didn't pull them out in time and they got knocked out. So the cab on my left is knocked out and I am I am still trying to pepper his cab with my missile units on my other flank. Of course backing them up with my spearmen. He's got another cab unit at my front trying to take a few pot shots but I'm sending I sent some of my, some of my cab and some of my infantry to chase him off, and I've done that, so I'm pulling my units back. I don't want to chase him and get bogged down. He tried to sneak some cab into my back to try to take out both some missile units and to try to get some sneak sneak strikes on my general. That did not end well for him, because I have my I have my melee units close together in my manipular fashion to try to deal with any threat that may happen to our legions like this. And he's pulling his troops out. He knows he's about to get slaughtered by him. That's, that's why I like to keep my units close together. 
That's why I like to keep compact armies to deal with gaps and deal with any flanking maneuvers. He was trying to move closer to try to take some more pot shots at my missile units. But we are... We are just concentrating on missile fire on his units equally. And his units are getting slaughtered. And yeah, he's starting to he's starting to waver. My cav units are chasing chasing away a big skirmish skirmish unit of his right there. They've been chased away. Now they're coming back to finish off the cav on the right flank here. They have been they have been massacred by my missile units. But he's got another cav coming up, coming up my front to take some more pot shots. So I'm gonna concentrate fire on them. I'm sending my cav what 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 pathetic forces he has left on the right. But I decide they're not worth it, so I pull them to another position. Pull my units out of that problem. Pull pull some of my units back back to my front. Yeah, his cav on my right has been almost has been rendered almost null and void at this point. They have been slaughtered. And he's sending one last big cav unit over here to try to try to deal with me. Isn't going to work. I send my missile units to concentrate fire on that unit. I send some of my cav out at that other unit on the left, and one of my cav units at their cav unit on my back, at my deck. And we've pretty much slaughtered the unit at our front with our missile, with our missile strikes, and we're just pulling back the cav now. His cav at this point is basically no longer a threat. He must have forgotten about this unit back here, because my guys just charge them, and it just slaughters them. My melee cavalry just tear these guys apart. And my cavalry has done their job. Their cavalry has been slaughtered. They are no more. At this point, he begins to move up his flanking phalanx units on both the right and the left. He knows his cavalry attack has been defeated and he's beginning to move up his infantry. He doesn't have any he doesn't have any missile units, so that's going to be a problem for him. He's already saying is he already knows it's about it's about to get hot for him. He's he's moving up his troops trying to get in a flanky position, but he has no missile units. He has no cav units. He can still win this. But it's going to be very tough. I think if he did a few little things, he could win. He has phalanx units. And that it that that can be devastating. But my missile units have a lot of missile have a lot of ammo left. And they are just going to wreak havoc on some of his units. Especially if I can get them behind some of the units. If I can get if I can get these missiles behind some of their phalanxes, I can tear them apart. Most units those units bounce off a lot of arrows from the front, but when you get behind them, you can tear units apart. So I'm moving up my line. I'm getting ready for his advanced line. He's got a long, a long line of advanced units coming to face my center. And he's got a few pike phalanx coming to try to hit me on the sides, try to envelop me. But again, it's going to be difficult to do that without, without any calf support. And they are moving up slowly and steadily phalanx formation. They're not thick. They're, they're not thinned out units. I'm glad to see. But I'm starting to hit him with shots from the side. I'm, I'm focusing my missile units on that guy and I'm slaughtering I'm slaughtering him from his weakened side. His side is his side is like butter. Not as buttery as the back of a phalanx but they can, they can lose a lot of people. So I start I've I've slaughtered a few of the units in that one phalanx. I start focusing on another one. He sends what remains of his cav unit in a suicide charge to try to take out my missiles. Which was a bit smart, a bit not. Nah, it wasn't smart at all. But I dealt with that cavalry unit. They're done focusing fire on his phalanx units right there. Try to take as many as I can. Try to take as many out as I can at the time. Moving my cavalry around, I don't want my cavalry to get caught up in their pikes. And at this point I send my flanking sword units to deal with those with those phalanx units. I should hit them on the side. It should 
swiftly devastate them. They've got two more flanking units on my other on my other flank, which I I will deal with by flanking those flanking units. They have a long line coming at me at their in their center, but I'm ready. But I'm confident that I'm ready for them. I move my troops into position. I'm I've hit the back of their phalanx unit right there with with one of my spearmen, and I surround them with my cav. So we've enveloped that unit terribly. Pop some general abilities to help the morale of my men. He's sending some troops to try to envelop my guys and try to take out my general. Yeah, his long line, his long line has a has a good advantage to just slip in and try to flank some guys, but they're thin, and that is a problem. Thinned lines are weakened lines, as far as I can tell. He's trying to, he's trying to deal with me. Certain parts of it. I'm pulling. The battle is turning in our favor. I'm trying to make sure my cavalry units are fighting the right units. I don't want to face that general infantry unit head on, so I'm moving them to the other guys. I'm letting my spearmen deal with that general. Unit. I'm fo focusing my missile units on the backs of that other unit that tried to get behind my lines and take my guy out. Yeah, I've taken out a few of their infantry units at the front because they're so thinned out. And, yeah, making a few more of them waver. Sending my infantry unit out to take that one pike unit. I've taken out most of their, most of their flanking forces. Uh, he tried to hit one of my units from the back. I tried to fight him a little with my general unit, but he got a little too... He got a little too messed up, so I pulled him back. Because I had no more, no more fighting for the general unit. At this point, I decided to throw out everything I have on the right of the general unit. Try to take him out once and for all. And his men are there, circling around, doing everything they can to defend the general. Sacrificing their lives, but it is for not. This battle has been won. The efforts have been defeated. Wine and women shall be the prize for the camp this day. My legions have done well. My opponent has done well. He was a mighty fine, mighty fine opponent here. But as you can see here, his skirmisher cav got barely any kills. Three of his skirmisher cav got zero kills. So he was a fine opponent, but he picked some bad units. He could have picked better units. Well, I'm your Graphics Rogue. This was another fun online battle. Like me or comment if you enjoyed the video. Or like me or comment if you didn't enjoy the video. Either way, I'll be back. Peace out, Internet.